Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Crystal and this is Books Forever After where I sit on the floor and we talk about everything and all things books. Alright, so today we, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be doing the New Year Booktuber tag originally done by Justin Reads. I will link her channel down below. And I've seen a few other booktubers that I posted as well and I wanted to join. So I initially had planned to um, post this few weeks, a couple weeks ago <laughs> in January, um, but fell a little behind in content posting as um, as our chronic illness girlies know, kind of fell ill and things like that and other things kind of snowballed in the month of January starting off the year. So today, due to an illness, I cannot put any makeup on my face. So you get the true crystal right here. <laughs> no makeup crystal here today. So, so thanks for watching. All right, so um, we have eight questions here um, that kind of just relate to the booktuber tag, um, some goals and plans for this year, what, what kind of things I'm interested in reading, and let's just get started, okay? So the first question is, what are you most excited about 2023? Um, <laughs> I think I'm really excited about um, joining BookTube because I just joined end of August this um, this past year, and I'm really um, really looking forward to um, making some friends on BookTube and getting some BookTube besties. As you can tell, I'm happily ever April. It's like my first one, <laughs> first friend of here, true friend of here. Um, um, if you have, are following her, um, you, um, please go and follow her. She's great. Um, I'll link her channel down below. Um, and so those kind of things are really fun. Um, getting some new friends. We're just talking about you know books, doing some collabs, um, read-alongs, that kind of thing, um, which I think it just makes reading even more exciting because not even I want to hear myself talk every day. <laughs> but I still want to talk about books. But I also just want to talk about books with others and not just um, myself, if because you know I'm alone here. <laughs> But yeah, so um, but yeah, so that's exactly why I joined BookTube anyway, just so I can get to talk with others about books and just share my love of books. So that is really the part I'm looking forward to this year to expand on that. Uh, number two, do you have a Goodreads challenge goal and why that number? Um, I have a Goodreads goal of 100 books this year. Um, ever since the pandemic, I think I started at like I read one book. Um, when I started getting back into reading and then in the following year in 2020 I read like six and then it's built in like 2021 I read like 75 and this past um, or 80 and then 2022 I read a 126 book so it's definitely um, escalated and I think this year even though I went to 126 last year I just want to keep it at 100 um, I don't want to push myself and have to be worried about reaching um, a certain number. Uh, 100 seems pretty realistic about, you know, I read about 10 to 12, 9 to 12 books a month most of the time, depending. And I really um, always want to focus on quality over quantity and especially reading books that I want to. So that I think that number kind of helps ensure that. Um, number three, list Three five star predictions. Okay, so first off, highest bidder by bidder, <laughs> highest bidder by Sarah Kate. I think this comes out in March. I can't remember. Um, I just I keep on I can't remember because like she's also re, um, got traditionally published and she's releasing um, reprints with her new publisher on her like praise and like just they give does it give me more. Or eyes on you. I can't remember which one, but yeah, that one I am just so looking forward to. Um, so, so yeah, I love the the Salacious Players Club series by her, and I actually got to be on her arc team last year, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, Flawless by Elsie Silver. I've been seeing that kind of, um, and I think Heartless. Oh, Flawless and Heartless by Elsie Silver. So. Heartless for sure, I think it's going to be a five star because it's a nanny romance and I love governess romances. <laughs> so this is like a small town cowboy romance which was really rocketed this year. So um, I've been hearing everybody loving that and that's one of those where I truly have a, um, a interest in reading it and not just because everybody else is reading it. It's actually something that um, intrigues me. So um, and then Arcana by Runix. Um, this is going to be a prequel 
standalone to Gothicana and Gothicana was one of my favorites that I read this past year. It was a gothic romance. This one is going to be like a traditional historical gothic romance following in the same world at the same school and I am just I'm here for it and um, I don't know when it's going to be released. I know she's been having um, some personal things this past year. Her mom passed away and so um, so she has had to delay the release of this book. So looking forward to that and I'm hoping I can't wait until this gets released and I really really want to buy a physical copy of Gothicana and definitely I want to order Arcana as a physical copy too. Um, number four. What genre, subgenre, or trope do you want to read more of? So obviously, as you can tell by my TBR challenges, if you've been watching me at all, is historical romance for sure. And then definitely fantasy romance. Um, that's also why I did the one shelf challenge is because that's a lot of my fantasy um, altogether. Most of it's fantasy, fantasy romance, YA fantasy, whatever. Um, and that was like my first love and like when I was a teenager as well was historical and fantasy romance has always been a love and those are my two two loves and I want to read more of those especially and so it being February definitely is the fa Pharaoh Feb fantasy romance fe of February so I have at least four books planned four or five fantasy books planned for this year for this month <clears throat> to read um so yeah let me see here and then definitely my favorite trope um, is kind of twofold. It's real, one is kind of like a sub trope of it, but it's second chance definitely. And then I love um, marriage and trouble romances. Um, those are my two favorite. And then I also love governess romances as well. I think it's the forbiddenness of it that the, all three of those have some sort of angst. And governess also has like you know it's gonna be like four sparks of already. Um, and those kind of all three kind of if I can get Forest Proximity there too as well um, it's guaranteed I most likely will like that book so definitely <clears throat> so what trope okay so number five what trope do you think will be the most popular in 2023 um, I'm not sure I'm not exactly good at book trends um, I know TikTok kind of makes that kind of happen. I know um, contemporary and like steamy contemporary romance is not necessarily dark romance all the time has been popular on TikTok but on booktube especially recently I know small town cowboy ram romances have been popular and I'm, I'm sure Elsie Silver has a, a launch as well so I know she's gotten big this year so I think we're going to see more of that. I think we might even see more romantic suspense Romantic suspense isn't really my favorite. Um, in small town, um, I usually like cowboy romances. I, I did like those as a western. So like my favorite book of a western historical romance is is True Love by um, Millie Criswell, which is like pretty much out of print and hard to find. Um, and she was a smaller author as well, so not well known. But like that. I love her Western, um, that book specifically, and I want to actually read more of hers um, if I can find them on like thrift books or Amazon or whatever. Um, but yeah, so I think those are what's going to be popular. It's more just continuation of that. Um, but what I want more of and what I love for it to be popular is Marriage in Trouble. Um, I just feel like because you always get the meet cute all the time and they're usually younger, I just want to see more age, uh, aged female characters or male main characters that are more my age and such so um they've been through already some been through life a little bit they've had they've already had to struggle and you know everyone loves you know the first loves and stuff but the struggle to just like I have to maintain that and that kind of that connection with your partner so I love those I've always loved those actually <laughs> Ever since I read his work romances, those were always my favorite was Governess and, and that. So it's it's kind of funny how years later that is still my favorite. Um, number six, name three bookish goals for the year. Okay, so obviously a read along with Joanne Hannah Lindsay. I want to make sure that um, is still going on. <laughs> um, this whole year, um, we, I've been having a lot of fun with Happily Ever April with it. Um, we're doing a read along 
one book a month of her Mallory Anderson series because there's 12 books in a month. We read it and then we usually have a read-along live show at the end of the month. Um, our one for February is actually um, going to be Sunday, February 28th at 9 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Um, Pacific time. And this one is going to be on Happily Ever April's channel. Um, and so we kind of swap, we'll be swapping each, uh, each month on, on different channels. So I should be posting, we should be posting here soon on Instagram, a little reminder and, and posting and getting that prepared on YouTube here soon. All right. Um, and then I will, secondly, I want to become more organized and more consistent with my content set up for a channel. Because obviously, um, I think preparation is going to be key for me because I am having a chronic illness, which can be very, things can just all of a sudden be, all your plans can be just gone up in the air when that happens. And especially with Hashimoto's, whenever I get a flare, I'm just, it's like my whole body gets the flu and I am out. Um, or if I get sick because of it, or, or I'm just more prone to that. So, you know, it's not fun. So, and as being a mom and a, um, a, the primary provider in our household, it's, it's, there's already a lot of stress and pressure. So I just kind of want to make sure that I'm set up for a success and I don't feel stressed out or feel guilty if I miss something. And like this past few weeks I've missed because of a flare and then some other medical things that popped up. So, so yeah, that's going to, I think, help me the most is just trying to plan out better and still allowing myself a little grace to be a little flexible on posting so not try to put too much pressure on myself on trying to post so many so I think I'm going to try to set maybe one or at least two videos a week um, and maybe sometimes three depending you know if it's a wrap up or you know a TBR video that kind of stuff so I think that's kind of where my my head is at um, and I just also don't want to be putting out content just to put out content because um, I also want to spend the time focusing on reading and doing things I love as well, but, and also it gives me time to collab as well, so. Um, and then third, I kind of want to make sure to help me become more organized is start trying to be more frequent and writing more reviews on like Goodreads and kind of using, um, I can't remember her name. I'll post her channel. I'm having a little bit of a brain fog right now. Um, she did a kind of like booktube 101 tip and I loved her tip on um, using the tags in Goodreads to kind of create a Google Do Drive doc, Google Drive doc to prepare content and list for for YouTube and then she you know you use your Goodreads review to kind of speak to that so you are trying to recall things um, and forgetting and stumbling over your words and that kind of thing. So I think that was really help the most helpful takeaway that I took from that. And um, hopefully you're gonna try to <laughs> try. To, or I've already started implementing that with this video, <laughs> doing that. So that's actually kind of cool. So yeah, I'll post her video down below. It was really, really helpful, and I really, really appreciated her putting that out. All right. So number seven, name three personal goals for the year. Um, I want to um, take a kind of like a mini second honeymoon or go to a big vacation second honeymoon with my husband. We're actually going to be celebrating our 10 year anniversary this October. So really excited for that. I'm originally um, from Hawaii and I have family that I recently connected with there. And I want to go be able to go visit them as well and just have our honeymoon there. So, so that is uh, really looking forward to that. Um, it, problem is with everything this past few couple of years with COVID, it's going to be really hard. And then also with inflation, hopefully we can be able to financially do it. So, um, so we're hopefully planning <laughs> and start saving to be able to get to go over there, um, at least this October. So we'll see. Um, the personal, other personal thing I have is obviously focus more on my health. Obviously what I've been experiencing lately is like, well, I need to be a little more mindful and not thinking that I won't be affected by what I've been doing for myself. So um, being with my nutrition. So, you know, my gluten sensitivity, 
um, that caused my flares and then um, and dairy and things like that and just general eating healthier um, and ensuring that we're doing that as a family as well so that's a goal um, and then also just spending more one-on-one -on -one time um, now that we're able to go back out <laughs> to the world and starting to do pick that up again um do like mom, mommy and me months uh, once a month um with my son i have a seven-year-old son and then i have a three-year-old daughter and just doing um m my husband and i kind of like doing something out as an excursion either together as a family or just doing like more experiences so to speak and doing more um just one-on-one -on -one time fun things so going to the movies or going to a museum or something to the zoo or something just where they get attention one-on-one -on -one. um and and yeah and so so yeah um which is hard because we're all kind of introverts to be honest <laughs> but you know uh and then the last one number eight is what do you want to leave behind in 2022 oh my gosh a few things <laughs> um in the book to world i just want to leave the term discrete cover um and just move more towards alternative cover because it kind of leads into my to my second point on not judging each other or even yourself for what you read and what you don't like and so like i do that i found myself doing that to my myself is I feel embarrassed to say I read romance. When, I, when I've been talking to people, like, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm such a book nerd. And then people ask, you know, oh, what books do you read? And I'm like, well, <laughs> fantasy, <laughs> historical, <laughs> but not mentioning romance. And a little bit of romance, like, I, it's, it just, I don't like that feeling. And I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't understand, I don't want to feel ashamed for liking romance. And, you know, because, the multi-billion dollar industry. I'm like, obviously a lot of people like romance, so. And last is, um, especially that I've been seeing more like on TikTok I've noticed is, I don't, I wanna read quality books and I, I love, and speaking of romance, I love spicy, smutty books as well, just the next person and um, I like it, you know, maybe one or two times a month and sometimes and I like it when it's like plot and spice level is like the same the same amount of equal distance there and unfortunately sometimes I feel like we're getting you know books for trope's sake so we're just there's nothing really planned out it's just like some authors might be just writing just to get a tagline in there or a certain phrase or quote out of the book but there's nothing else of quality there and I get you hooked to read the book but it's you end up being disappointed or then you all that has all these tropes you know in conjunction with that based off the trope and it doesn't have any it's not really fleshed out or thought out so um so yeah so that is what I want just to leave behind in 2022 all right so that is all the questions and thank you guys for watching um if you want to do this tag i tag any and all who want to join i feel like that's probably a um just a fun thing to learn more about you get about yourself so um so yeah so if you want to do this video i tag you as well and i will post um justin reed um her her channel down below as well all right, well, thank you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.